All right, good evening. Sorry it's dark, uh, but here I am. Uh, I want to answer the question that David Barnes posed about, uh, about the Tanya and, <coughs> and its comments about the non-Jewish souls, which has been a source of a lot of... Uh, anti-Semitism, especially since the, the Tanya was translated to English and people point this out, but even before then, it was already there, there were people who were aware of this and uh, my take on it is it's twofold, one as much as I venerate the Balatanya and it's scary on, on it was coming up to his special day when he had, when the, the, the Bob should see him make a suicide do up to celebrate his release from prison. Uh, <coughs> to, to be criticizing Balatanya, there's a certain fear uh, that I have to be criticizing, but that being said, he's an Ahron, and an Ahron doesn't have to be right. An Ahron can be wrong. You know, when we say, Elu ve'elu divr lekim chayim, this and this are the words of living God, so then we can be discussing about the Tanayim, maybe the Amarayim. You want to maybe say to the Rishonim, even with the Rishonim, the Rishonim could also be wrong. The fact is that Amarayim can be wrong too. We don't have to extend this idea of Elu Ve'elu Devra Lekim Chaim to every word that every Achron says. This is a major mistake <coughs> that's made in the Orthodox Jewish world today. We have no obligation to try to reconcile. It's a beautiful, nice thing to do to reconcile the teachings of the, of the different Dachreinim. We have no obligation to do so. And it's not necessarily so. It ain't necessarily so. Like the song goes, right? Not everything's in the Mishnah Brura. Not everything that Rabbi Moshe says. Not everything, with, with all due respect. Not all of it has to be right. That doesn't mean that it's not written Baruch HaKodesh, but, we, but it's a, a lack of understanding what Baruch HaKodesh means. Baruch HaKodesh is not infallible. Meaning when, when the when the Devrachayim said that someone who doesn't believe that the Archaim HaKodesh was written with Baruch HaKodesh is a, an apikoros. We can discuss whether it means halachically speaking or colloquially. But even when we accept this idea that every word in the Orachayim HaKodesh is written Baruch HaKodesh, and even every word of the Tanya perhaps is written Baruch HaKodesh, the Tanya himself says that he <coughs> he, uh, he, he, he didn't realize when he was writing this book. It was He went on autopilot. And I know Mekobolim Ad Hayoy who discuss this derech of writing, that it's not a, an intellectual um, conscious effort of writing, but rather to go into a trance-like state and just have automatic writing. And you write what's in there, and it's uh, it's the same idea. Like uh, there was the the, the um, with the mechaber, he he spoke with the malach, with called the magid, and there's a sefer magid mesharim. That's his uh, his uh, journal of his channeled literature that he channeled from this magid. What's a magid? What is a magid? Rabbi Bart Sadok explains a magid is a is a manifestation of one's own internal um, subconscious. And so a tzaddik, someone who has das Torah, they, the subconscious that they tap into when they are, when someone like this has an experience like this, where they experience their own subconscious as an independent being, I forgot there's a technical word for it, they're drawing from their own Torah learning that they've invested in. It's not a prophetic 
experience. It's an experience of being aware of what Torah you've studied your whole life and being a Talmud Chochem and being, being a scholar and tapping into that subconscious scholarship. That's all it is. It's, and, and although I believe it's with divine providence and so forth, but it doesn't put it on the pedestal of prophecy. <coughs> and so there can be things that are wrong in there that are still by Baruch HaKodesh and perhaps also it's been a Shemayim that we have like this these are the Sfarim that we're supposed to have for whatever reason but it doesn't mean that, that they are infallible the um, and, and the fact is the different Tzadikim argued on these issues you know not only about this particular issue but it's a machlek, it's already in the Rishonim. The whole idea of a Jewish soul, is there even such a thing? And what does it mean? Does it, 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 that's the other aspect, which was the other part. So, I mean, the first thing is I can say I reject this. Just like Rabbi Nachman disagreed with, um, with, with the Balatanya on the meaning of what is a, what is a tzaddik, and whereas the Balatanya pretty much is saying that you kind of have to be born a tzaddik, whereas uh, Rabbi Nachman clearly does not have that belief. And so they had a clear machloikas. You don't have to say, Elo ve'elo de v'lukum chayim. It's possible. One, nine, one, seven, to two, say one, six, that one two, is right three, and one is two, wrong. Five. It's, it's, it's totally possible to say one is right and one is wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. To say that Rabbi Nachman is right and the Balatanya is wrong, or the Balatanya is right and Rabbi Nachman's wrong. And so obviously if you're a chosa to Rabbi Nachman, you're going to say Rabbi Nachman's right. And if you're a chosa to Balatanya, you're going to say the Balatanya's right. And everybody's supposed to fo follow their Rebbe. And that's how Yiddishkeit works today, because we don't have a Sanhedrin, especially with areas of Hashkofa. There is no centralized Hashkofa. There is no psak in Hashkofa, it, uh, uh, other than perhaps the, the Yud Gimelikrim. And things that are maybe told us of the Yud Gimelikrim, but it's not really that there's a clear psak in Hashkofa. Even with the Yud Gimelikrim, we see that there, there were issues of Machlech. It's not really in whether or not they're Jewish beliefs, but whether or not they're Ikrim. <coughs> Excuse me. So we, we, we are under no obligation to accept... This is the Balatani said about the non-Jewish souls coming from Shlosh Klippus of Timaeus. But the other aspect is that a non-Jewish soul is not necessarily the soul of the non-Jew. Like we, we can bring from, from uh, Yitzchak of Akko, who was a Rishon. He's, he was a Talmud of, 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 the, of the Rambana Kodesh. He was a Mekubal. You know, a lot of people like to say the whole idea of the Jewish soul, the rationalists reject the idea of the Jewish soul. And the Kabbalists accept the idea of the Jewish soul. But even among the Kabbalists, the idea of the Jewish soul is not cut and dry. So the... So the, uh, the um, uh, what's his name? The, the Rabbi Yitzchak of Akko says there are non-Jews born with Jewish souls and there are Jews born with non-Jewish souls. And we're not only talking about Gerim. I know Chabad, they always like to make it, well, if you're a Gerim, it means you were born already with a Jewish soul. It's a, it's a silly thing. <coughs> but the other aspect is that, uh, and so this term, Jewish soul, non-Jewish soul, it's more a colloquialism, it's a Kabbalistic term that means something deeper, but then there's more to it, is that the Jewish soul or the soul in general is something you earn. Meaning, if you ever watch <coughs> The Simpsons, there's an episode where Bart sells his soul, and at the end, Lisa says, there are theologians say that you're not born with a soul, but the soul is something that you earn. And, he, and, and she said, I think you earned your soul going through this ordeal. In the, in the Sifre Kabbalah, La Havdil from the Ariya Kodesh, this idea is brought that not only that, but by different aspects of davening, we gain different levels of soul. And so the soul is not necessarily something that's ingrained in us, but something that we have to earn. And so this idea of the Jewish soul, so forth, it doesn't mean 
in the racist way that just, oh, you're born Jewish, so you have a Jewish soul, and this and that. No, that's not, that's a, that's not even what the Mikubalim say. Obviously, the rationalists reject the whole idea. But the Mikubalim also reject this idea. That uh, and, and and so we don't have, and even from the Hasidim, Psim Chabunim uh, said like this that the soul is not something that you're born with, but something you earn. So you even have from the Hasidish side, I understand the you know, Chabad, they're like, oh, the Polish Hasidim, Polish Hasidim. That's the thing, we respect the Balatanya, but we can be Choylik. Not that we, not that I'm someone to be choylik in the Balatani Chas Shalom, but I'm saying that the Reb Simchum Bunim Shischa was someone to, who could be choylik on the on the on the Tanya, and Reb Nachman Breslover was someone who could be choylik on the Tanya, and and so and we don't have to say Elu Velu Devukam Chaim. We don't have to say they're both right. We can accept one is right and one is wrong, and it can still be with Ruach Hakodesh, but Ruach Hakodesh is not Nevuah, and in Ruach Hakodesh. Of an, of an Achron, it's not the Ruch HaKodesh of David Melech either. These are the things we have to understand. So th- that's the answer that I give to this. It's pretty much that, first of all, I reject pretty much the whole idea, but even if I want to accept it, I, I don't accept it in a racial term, and not even and not even that the Ger, although I believe also the Ger is Kekot and Anoilot, he gets a, a new Neshama when, he, when he's Megayar, not that it's it's lap davka because I remember asking Kalva Reb about this. Who I believe is a Baruch Hakodesh, and I said, you know, there's someone who wants to be a ger. Does this person have a Yiddish and a Shama? You know, I'm accepting it in the way like you know, because I, I that's how I thought when I was younger. That you know, you you only someone who's already born with a Jewish soul is destined to be a ger. He's predestined to be a ger, and Kalva Reb kind of like laughed at me and said, that's not the way this works. If he wants to be a ger, it's going to be a, a schus for him, and uh, but he has to make a decision on his own. It's nothing to do with. There's nothing that you can say with Ruch Hakodesh. He he wasn't talking about Ruch Hakodesh. He was b- being a non of. But he said, "I can't say this." He has to make the decision on his own. So so if you understand what I mean, putting all these pieces together, that's uh, I, I'm saying pretty much my answer to this question. About what Balatanya says about about non-Jewish souls coming from the Klipas of either it it can be rejected totally, which I think is probably a wise thing to do, or it could be understood. Meaning, uh, I, and I know people are offended by this, but you have certain people, even of other religions, uh, they're not not yeah the galich is a galich, you know. It's not like, you know, you have certain fine, upstanding, good people in the world who have epis, what you could call like a Yiddish and a Shama. They have a, a holy soul. They're holy people of other traditions. And we don't have to denigrate them necessarily. We can disagree with them. We can say this is not our tradition. And we can say that even what their beliefs are, it's in count, it goes against the Sheva Mitzvah when they Noach. And so they're technically, by our standards, they're in sin. But the fact of the matter is, the, the Navi Malachi says, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the earth, great is my name among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. That everywhere where they're offering an offering, it's to my name, it's a mincha tahor, it's a pure offering, which we've mentioned many. So that means that the Hasidi Yomas Oilam have the Yiddish and Hashama even within their Avodazar. It's 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 shaykh to say that. Now I know obviously most people are gonna be choilik on me with that, and I think you know you have your right to be choilik on me. But I'm saying it's just as much to say that the, the, that this whatever this means this inyan of Yiddish and Hashama, which b'derech klal these types of inyanim, you're gonna see they have uh, the same idea as different terminology is used when you when you compare. <coughs> of the Uriah Kodesh to the of the Ramchal, they're talking about the same concepts, but they're using different terms. It's the same thing here. That uh, you know, uh, and, and not only that, but each person could have in, in themselves the Eitzah Tov and the Eitzah Hara. And it's love dafka the way that that we're thinking. We we take things in such a fundamentalist way, and we assume that we, we have to accept everything exactly as it's not necessarily so. 
And so that's my answer. Thank you for watching or listening, whatever. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. We'll see you later. Take care.